Hey, I'm Bethany, and I want to start doing a video blog about my journey into becoming a beer judge, um, especially because uh, once I achieve this goal, I'll be one of the few female beer judges out there here in the U.S. and probably the world. And so I think it's going to be exceptionally interesting, and um, I'm excited to kind of infiltrate a boys club and also talk to women more about the joys of beer. <laughs> um, a lot of people are really, like, shocked, I mean, that I'm getting into this particular hobby. I, I think mainly because I'm a woman, and people don't really expect that from a woman. And um, they always ask me, oh, what what got you into that? And I, what made you just to become a beer judge in particular? And I, I never know the answer because I can't really remember. Um, and I just, I, I think it was as simple as that I am very interested in beer, and one day I thought, hmm, what does it take to become a beer judge, I wonder? Wouldn't it be cool to judge beer? And I just Googled it and found out about how you actually become a beer judge, and it's something that is taken pretty seriously. At competitions, you don't have to be a certified beer judge to actually judge beer, but you have to be paired with a certified beer judge, um, at least. And anyway, I plan on becoming certified, and I'm definitely on my way there. The first step is to take an online entry exam, um, and this is all put together by the Beer Judge Certification Program, the BJCP, and I took that and passed it. And then you have to go to a tasting exam. That's the second step. And uh, in order to do all of this, you need to be a beer expert. I actually paid, um, I think it's like $10 to take the, the online entry exam. And then you pay, you can pay $20 to take it three times. And I, I did the latter because I didn't really know what to expect. And I did study a lot beforehand because I knew it was no joke. Uh, they don't just take people that like beer. <laughs> you have to really know your stuff. They ask you about various beer styles. And I think um, people that don't know a lot about beer would be quite surprised to know how many beer styles there are out there. That background noise is my adorable daughter. Um... Anyway, and you also have to know about the brewing process uh, and just about beer in general, you know, what it's made of, why it works, etc. And um, when I first took it, I, I had all the basic knowledge. I thought that, um, you know, I knew plenty, I, I knew the basic, I had a good understanding of the brewing process and about beer in general, and I knew about all of the styles, at least, you know, to, to a certain level, and so I thought, okay, you know, I'm good to go, and I did not pass, and they, you have to answer 200 questions, um, there are multiple choice questions for the most part, uh, in 60 minutes, and I thought, I, I just didn't think it was going to be that hard. Um, and, ooh, my TV turned on, I got like, uh, hold on, I didn't think it was going to be that hard, um, and it really was, and I realized they don't just want people that know beer and like beer, they want beer experts, like, total freaking experts, right, and, um, I, I was like, wow, I've got to study a lot harder. I can't just be a beer enthusiast. I can't just, like, know what the difference is between, a, you know, an American premium lager and an American standard lager. Like, I, I really have, I have to go above and beyond. And so I buckled down and I really studied and I recorded myself talking about beer and reading about beer and I played it back to myself and... 
One day I just got fed up with all the studying and I was like, screw it, I'm taking this again. And I did. And I was really proud of myself because I, the amount of knowledge I'd acquired, I didn't realize how much it was. Um, when the first, the first time I took it, I couldn't get through all 200 questions. The second time I took it, I had time to spare when I was finished, and I was able to go back and, and look at quest other questions that I, I had second guesses about, and um, I, I passed. They tell you right away, which is cool, and, you know, it just made me really proud because this test, again, is no joke. You really have to know your stuff. The one thing that, I mean, the biggest thing, actually, that put me at a disadvantage with this whole test and just with you know, my aspirations in general is the fact that I am completely new to home brewing. I think most people that become beer judges are avid home brewers. They've done it many times before. Um, and I, I'd never done it when I took the uh, preliminary exam. And when you're tasting beers and you're judging beers, I think that it's important to to have been a home brewer, and I I wish I'd started earlier, um, because besides just judging these beers, you need to be able to tell the person that made them how they can make it better, and you cannot tell them that unless you have done it yourself, um, and it's not easy turns out. Uh, so that's something that I've just recently started doing and um, I really, you know, want to continue doing it and part of me feels kind of bad about, you know, this whole process of doing all this without becoming a, a home brewer first and maybe I would have done more home brewing beforehand but I think as a woman it's exceptionally difficult to become a beer judge in a certain amount of time and here's why. Um, to become a beer judge, so you take this entry exam that I was talking about online, and then you do the tasting exam. They encourage you to, to have signed up for a tasting exam before you do the entry exam. And the reason for that is that it's so diff you have to do the tasting exam within a year of passing the entry exam, but it's extremely difficult to get a tasting exam spot. And, wow, is that ever right? I mean, I emailed so many different places to get a spot at a tasting exam. Um, you know, in my hometown in Sacramento, California, I'm in the New York area, uh, and the NYC, I mean, and, uh, you know, Pennsylvania, Connecticut, everywhere in the tri-state area. I was like, can I get a spot? Can I get a spot? And, I mean, there are places that are just booked years ahead of time. And it's crazy. And also, especially being in New York City, you'd think that they would have exams all over the place, but no. There were way more exams available in Sacramento, my hometown, than there were in New York City. It was really interesting. I don't know what that is, but... It was interesting and crazy and annoying, and I really didn't think I was going to get a spot. And as a woman, I could have said, okay, you know what? There's no rush on this. I can do all of this in a year or two years or this time or that time or whatever. But I have a daughter now. I want to have more children. Uh, my husband and I are carefully planning our family, and... You know, I don't want to plan my family around beer. <laughs> um, and, you know, it, it it works that way. You've got nine months of pregnancy and this many months of this and that, you know, all in having a child. And when you involve this whole, like, you have to do this in a year, but you can only take this test at this time or that time in the mix, it, it just makes things a little crazy for us ladies. Maybe that's one of the reasons why there are few female beer dresses out there. Um, although I suspect that there are some larger reasons. Um, 
But anyway, I finally got at, I don't know if it was, I think it was, no, it was before I took the tasting exam, yeah. Yeah, it was that I got my uh, seat in Pennsylvania, and I was so excited. I couldn't believe it's in October, and I got it. I got the seat like um, in July, I think, and I was ugh so relieved to have gotten something that was far enough for me to you know really keep studying, but close enough for me to not worry about how, uh, planning around my second child, which I do hope to have soon. Um, so, that was cool, and, uh, I'm really looking forward to it. So, after I passed the tasting exam, and, uh, now I'm, I mean, sorry, I didn't pass the tasting exam, the, the initial exam, now I'm going to the tasting exam, so now I'm definitely, definitely working more on my homebrew knowledge. I did do my first home brew, and there's a whole interesting story behind it. Um, I've already taken up 11 minutes of everyone's time, so I'm going to do that in a separate blog. But uh, it's an interesting story, uh, and I learned a lot from it, and it's um, it's got its ups and downs. And for those of us who love beer, it's fun. Right? So, um, anyway, guys, I hope that I'm sure that people that are not beer enthusiasts find this incredibly boring. Um, and those who are may be like, okay, I've heard all this before. Like, you know, you're an, quite an amateur, but maybe someone out there finds this somewhat exciting and interesting. And I do hope to share my experience with people that are embarking upon this same goal, especially women, uh, but you don't have to be a woman to watch and talk, and, um, so I'm gonna, you know, split off here so that people can take a breather, but I'm gonna also pick right up with my whole experience with my first home brew, which, uh, was not, which, well... I'm not going to give anything away. <laughs>